I just watched TNA Wrestling's latest pay-per-view from last night's final resolution and I can only agree to what Michael TNA said when the show went off the air. What a thing of entire beauty this entire night has been. That's exactly what it was. Throughout the night, until I saw the last two matches, I thought kind of, well, it's been... Actually the matches I didn't expect that much from that has been the, the, the pure pleasure so far of the pay-per-view. And also this was actually a pay-per-view. I had... I was right in every match except for the briefcase match, Feast or Fire. Every prediction I had for the other seven matches. So this is my best pay-per-view so far predictions wise. This is in a time where I've been down a little having pretty poor predictions being like 50-50 or like 4 out of 7 at best. So good way for me to finish off 2010 when it comes to predictions. Uh, so, because the match started off really good, you saw British Invasion beating Morris City Machine Guns just like I expected, but this was a match, well, it was a great match, but you, you kind of under understood when the MCMG got so much offense in, but they didn't get the pin, they get, had so much great move, moves doing, the great assets and everything, really, really great offense by, by MCMG in this match, but you kind of understood as they, as they didn't get the pin falls that they were not going to make it. And that was the case. British Invasion retained, shading a little, but not, not not that big of a deal. Very good opener. Then you had Terra ODB. I expected a lot of, from this match, a lot, but it didn't really bring. It wasn't a bad match. It was a good match. It was an okay match. And Terra, like I predicted, won the Knockouts Championship. Very much deserved, uh, in my opinion. Some may disagree to that, but I think she was treated a little bad in the WWE, to say the very least. We moved on with the Feast or Fired match, I believe. I didn't get a briefcase right. I was considering giving Rob Terry a briefcase instead of Cody Deaner, but that would have been for the pink slip, meaning Terry would have been released. Instead, Sheik Abdul Bashir is fired. Rob Terry get an X Division title shot. He better shape up his wrestling skills. Kevin Nash get a tag team shot. And Samoa Joe gets the World Championship title shot against AJ Styles at a future date of his choosing. Uh, the match itself can't say that it was that particularly good. I mean, the interest of the match is the briefcases afterwards, where I was actually a little nervous and tense. Uh, moving on then, it was the eliminations match with Rhino 3D and Jesse Neal versus Hernandez, Matt Morgan, Suicide and De Niro, which, yeah, and once again, the faces won the match. Hernandez went through an ordeal at the opening of the match against all four by himself. I actually uh, eliminated Rhino before the other three came out to his aid. Four and three then. The match finished off with Matt Morgan against 3D. He pulled it off. It was an okay match as well. Matt Morgan is booked to look strong and solid. And he he did just that. Uh, and well, then we had also the tag team match, which was I was impressed. I mean, Abyss Foley versus Dr. Stevie Rhino. Not only is the feud old, I really thought that this match was good. I mean, I didn't expect that much from it. Really good, entertaining match. Turned into a Foley's House of Fun match. Someone to rip off a Rhino's House of Fun match. Or Raven's House of Fun match. Foley Abyss pulled it off. Abyss countered a move from Raven when he thought it was going to lose. And I was right again. That's the big deal here for me. Good match. And also Scott Steiner, Bobby Lashley. Great match. Really good. Steiner really pulled it off. He really got the crowd going. There were a lot of fans being behind him. And I think they are booking Bobby Lashley in such a weird way. He really isn't that over. It could have been a lot over. Problem with him is, first off, they had this MMA versus TNA match where they kind of isolated him being some sort of an intruder to TNA, trying to hurt TNA because he wasn't a TNA guy. He was a MMA guy. I mean, if you're a TNA fan, who wants to see an MMA guy coming in and beat up your talent? No one. Um, and he was booed out at Bound for Glory. He really was booed out. He won that match in a weird way as well. And with a kind of lame MMA move. Didn't like that. Then you have kind of Crystal being the man in the family of these two. Supposed to be a married couple. She does the talking. She barks, as you said, and Bobby Lashley bites. I just think this is very weird. And... It, it, it kind of to me, well, you had Booker T, Queen Charmel. You really hated Queen Charmel back in the WWE, but you got the heat transferred to Booker T as well because he always sided with his wife. He always, they always coexisted in teamwork. Here is like Crystal tells Bobby Lashley what to do, and you, it kind of annoys me. I mean, she was the one winning the match for her husband, more or less, at this very pay per view. So, anyways, 
they need to make Bob, Bobby Lashley look strong and solid himself and I mean Crystal isn't that big of a talent in, in WWE you know all of a sudden she's gonna be the big the big the bigger guy I almost said but the, the dominant part of this duo or something I don't get that uh, well, and then we got what we were expecting from Desmond Wolf versus Kurt Angle, three degrees of hell. Uh, this is kind of this was the second last match of the pay per view. Earl Hebner he refereed it, and I can see why why he doesn't get the main events because he isn't good anymore. Earl Hebner has ruined so many matches. He's a terrible referee. He makes so many. He just watch it. He runs so many mistakes. You know. By the way that he counts when he goes down for the count, you know whether the wrestler will count out or kick out, uh, whether the wrestler will kick out or whether they will be counted out to three. You can simply by looking how he does it, you know, okay, he's going to kick out this time. You know it. He's a bad. And he, he ain't got it anymore. He needs to shape up. He can be a lot better if he just fixes those, those things. And then in the second fall submission, he starts counting, counting pinfalls. So, uh, the, the weird thing is, he was a good referee in WWE, but twice when he was in the WWE, I saw a referee count one, two, and then stop, as if the wrestler was supposed to kick out, only that the wrestler didn't kick out, it was supposed to have been a three count. Two times I saw that happen, both times with Earl Hebner. Uh, however, this match was awesome. The submission for the second fall, so, such a great chain wrestling. They are so technical, they are so awesome. This is kind of reminiscent back to the old territory days from the 70s and 80s, the golden days of wrestling. Awesome match, awesome, you can't boo that. I mean, it's not hyper entertaining, but why we can't boo that? You can, simply not even the fans, the ignorant fans of the WWE wouldn't boo that. Because that was you, you can just see they are great, they know what they do, the timing is perfect the coordination is perfect and they are so technical they are such a great specimen in the ring and the reason for the first fall being such a slow despite being a pinfall is simply because you can have a blow off fall that blows the roofs off and then go back to work where a slow submission wrestling start but this was a great match um, Nigel McGuinness, Desmond Wolf won the first fall, Kurt Angle tied it with a submission after locking in the ankle up submission for like three times they had so great counters throughout the match Simply awesome. And then you also had, oh, Kurt Angle simply escaped the cage like two inches before Desmond Wolf was able to do the same thing through the door. So Kurt Angle won two to one despite losing the first wall. Then the main event, awesome, simply awesome. Daniels versus AJ Styles. Styles clash from the ropes. We saw a superplex from the ropes, not from the turnbuckle, from the middle of the ropes. They just climbed up there and they did a superplex. Awesome. There was so many great moves, it was back and forth, and I mean, I went into the match thinking, well, AJ is going to win, I wasn't that interested, but they, they caught my interest, they made me interested, awesome pay-per-view, awesome finish, and like Tine said, what a, what a thing of entire beauty this pay-per-view was, just like thir Turning Point, Bound for Glory was very good, just like Slammiversary, Lockdown, Sacrifice, TNA has made some really huge steps in how to build a pay-per-view, how to produce a proper card, how to build up the matches, and simply don't have loads of video packages for every match, simply have every match mean as much. They have learned progression throughout the pay-per-view. Some matches will have to be sacrificed to build others up. That's the way it is. TNA has started to learn that right now, I think. I mean... As, even as a fan, you could notice they had troubles doing that before. But they make, oh, they they are do so much progress. They are not going to be an impact next week. They are going to be some sort of special impact on New Year's Eve. That's not a very good way to lead up and hype the impact on January fourth, because there isn't going to be a real impact for like three weeks now. And then when they go on Monday, will people remember that they should have they would have needed to hype? Uh, the January 4th Monday episode of Impact for several weeks. They won't be able to do that now. That's not the ultimate situation for them. Some major screw ups on the pay per view. Abyss, third degree burns. Taz said, no way. Third degree burns, meaning he will more or less lost the leg. And yeah, he was hurt at some times, very, very hurt. And then he wasn't hurt at all. And you had also, why was the cage locked? Why was the can someone tell me why was the cage locked? Why did they have to pull off a chain in the Desmond Wolf versus Kurt Angle match? Simply no logics whatsoever. 
However, still a great pay-per-view. Share your thoughts. Check out my ECW brand Kill or Keep or my Kill or Keep about the special guest hosts. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.